Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel Say What's Real TV. This review is for Kingdom Business Season 2 Episode 3 Why We Sing. So we open up the episode with Calvin. He's at the table when he gets some emails warning him to keep his mouth shut about the Danny situation. Also in the email they sent pictures of Taj and CJ and told him he has been warned. So of course now Calvin is shook. So later in the episode, we're in this dark alley and we see someone <laughs> beating someone down with a baseball bat. Come to find out, it's Chief Ray. So Calvin is on a rampage. He's telling him, look, somebody is threatening my kids. So he's basically accusing Ray of doing it. Ray claims he would never hurt the kids. He's known them all their life. But so Calvin was like, well, give me some names. Otherwise, I can ruin your career. I've seen you at those parties. I know what you can do. Ray told Calvin that his little appearance at the party the other night really caused up a stir. Now everybody's over there worried. He brings up Dex's names, but says that Dex is just a messenger. He only does what he's told. But he gives up the name Jack Peterman. I guess Calvin looked like he may have known who that person was, but we didn't get any more information about that. So Calvin did tell Ray that since somebody brought his kids in, and I guess should anything happens to either one of them, he will be back and he will be bashing in Skull. So we go over to the Rebel's house and her and Xavier have moved the relationship to the bedroom. So they are in there having sex. Well, Xavier is anyway, because Rebel is checked out. She is totally uninterested, bored, and ready to go. He is over there humping and pumping and winding and grinding and so into it that he calls her, ooh, you nasty bee. <laughs> she hauls off and slaps him. So she jumps out of the bed and go grab her something to drink. All of a sudden, she's fully clothed and he comes fully clothed and apologizes and she tells him to get his disrespectful behind up out her house. He's still being apologetic, telling her, look, you know, most girls tend to like that. And she says she's not most girls. And he says, I know that now, like, I don't like that either. She said, well, I don't know what you like. I just know what's coming out of your mouth. And he said he can respect that. So she got this phone call and Xavier got in his feelings and ended up leaving. So she's telling the person that uh, she's been trying to reach out to them and she doesn't know if she should have went back or not because what if it ruined everything she's worked so hard for? So who do you guys think she's talking to? My guess is Detective Parker. So we see that Danita, she went back to work. Everyone welcomed her back. She had to actually kick Darlene up out of her office, out of her chair, because Darlene over there just taking over. She actually meets up with her attorney, Ren McKinney, and they discuss him trying to get rid of this lawsuit that Caesar has on her. And she says she needs to focus on getting her voice back. So he tells her that her voice is insured, so she asks him to find out how much. So we go over there to Redeeming Records where Taj is showing his daddy, I mean Caesar, wink wink, pictures of his baby sonogram. And they laugh and joke about how big the baby head is just like Taj. So Caesar says that he's always wanted to be a dad. He think he would have made a great dad. So Taj tells him it's never too late. So he says he doesn't want to wait too much longer, but God has to send him someone first. And uh, Taj tells him, you know, you need to get out the studio. You got to make yourself available, pretty much. And I hope he doesn't hook up with Sasha. Please don't let this man hook up with Sasha. So these two laugh and joke about Essence and how she's trying to plan a wedding, plan a tour, running around like a little chicken with her head cut off all at the same time. So Caesar told Taj he had to get serious for a minute and bring up the lawsuit against Danita and told him he got like 60 days to file against the original injunction, uh, you know, depending on her recovery and all of that. And he just wanted to make sure that him and Taj were good and let Taj know the lawsuit has absolutely nothing to do with him. And Taj is like, yeah, but a lawsuit, like, do you really have to do that? And Seas was like, look, I gave your mom every opportunity to make things right, and she didn't take it. So later we see Rebel come in, and Caesar is telling Taj and Rebel that they have to prep for the following day because they're going to be singing at the Lakeland Correctional Center. 
something that he does every year. And of course, we have to get the whole pushback thing from Rebel, and Caesar basically just reads her her rights and lets her know, you got it twisted. Yes, you will be doing it. You need to start thinking about somebody other than yourself all the time. And did you not learn anything that Tasha Cobbs told you? And let her know, you are under contract with me. And also told Taj, you're going to be a blessing as well to the inmates because you will be singing. He tried to give his little push back and <laughs> Cs was like, uh-uh-uh, these people don't judge. Throwing his words back on him the way he told Rebel. <laughs> so Taj, he's working on some music when Rebel comes in and he tells her that he's writing a song for her and she wants to know if uh, Caesar put him up to it. And he said, no, he wanted to do it for her. And, you know, you could tell the little chemistry between them is brewing. So she tries to change the subject and break the ice in a sense and ask about his mom, how she was doing. She then asks about Calvin and says, uh, I haven't seen him since I slapped him. And I'm like, Rebel, why you lying? You just saw Calvin at the little private party you was at when you practically saved his life when Dex had the knife up to his throat. So I'm confused. It's really none of Taj's business that you were at the private party, but you said that as if you really be seeing Calvin out in these streets. Like, where would you have seen him anyway? But anyway, Taj says that he had the slap coming and Rebel tells him that he didn't kill Danny. So she tells him that she saw his engagement to Essence and thought it was real fancy and nice. And she sits down and looks at the music that he's working on. And he asks her, does she want to help him out, considering how their last collaboration went? And you could tell the sexual tension is building up between the two just sitting there because she's looking at him. He's looking at her. And to avoid locking lips once again, she said, let me let you get back to work. And she jumped up to try to leave. And he comes behind her claiming he needs her help with singing at the prison. And she says that I know you can sing. There's no need to be nervous. But if you do get nervous, just stare at me the whole time. And child, we know he will have absolutely no problem doing that. So we see Danita working hard to try to get her voice back. So she goes to see her vocal coach, Ladarius, and she's doing these little exercises. And he's telling her, look, just stop, just stop, because you're wasting your time and mine. So she tells him that she's not going to give up. And she's asking him, what does he think it could be that's causing this? And he says there's something blocking the songbird within. And he tells her that it's not physical. It may be mental or it could be something spiritual. She can go see a therapist for the mental or go talk to God for spiritual. And of course, who does she go and talk to? Deacon Dwayne. So he's playing one moment from Glory on the piano and she remembers the melody and says, music never leaves you. So he tells her there's only one thing missing now and that's her voice. So she asks him, why would God save her life but kill her blessing? So Dwayne, he brought up the dream that she had about the baby and asked her, did she remember what he asked her when he said that one of the kids are hurting and does she know which one? So she tells him she has no idea because Taj over there running around, rushing into a marriage he's not ready for and CJ is dealing with mental health issues and she doesn't know how to go about helping them. And he says that she can start with telling the truth and stop all the lies. So Danita wanted to know where the two related, I guess her voice in the dream about the kids. And he tells her two messages, one dream. She told him she didn't know where to start and he told her to begin where the lies first started. So we go over there to Rebel's house and she's talking to the older lady that always just pops up like a ghost out of the blue, like kind of like how Dwayne does. I don't know who she is. I don't know what her name is. I don't know what her relationship to Rebel is. If anybody knows, let a sister know. But anyway, they're talking. We see that Xavier is blowing her phone up, texting her. And that's what they're talking about. And she's saying to the lady, like, should she give him another chance? So she tells Rebel, perhaps, but be careful. And she quickly dismissed that and asks about Taj. So Rebel says, still engaged, still unavailable. So the lady was like, well, just promise me that you won't put up with anything less than what you deserve. So she says that Xavier can take her places that Caesar can't or won't and started complaining because she had to sing at the correctional center. And the lady was telling her, well, what's wrong with that? Music helped you and uh, Danny back in the juvie center. 
and said that it would be nice for her to lift somebody else up. Basically telling her the same thing that Caesar told her. So the next thing you know, Xavier is back over at Rebel's house. This time he has this diamond gold watch he's trying to bribe her with to get back in good. And she's looking at the watch like, oh, I can't take this because it looks like it costs more than my car. He says, it doesn't matter because I didn't pay for it. And I'm like, why would you even tell her that? <laughs> he says that he got he got it as a gift. Like people give him gifts all the time. Like it really doesn't matter to him. So she told him, look, I'm not looking for a boyfriend. He said, good, because I'm not trying to beat a boyfriend. They both agreed that they're going to be hunching partners. And that was it. And if things don't work out, no hard feelings. They'll just continue to work in the studio and that's it. She did tell him that she will not put up with any more of his BS. And he agreed. And I got a feeling Xavier is going to fall in love. Because apparently I think he really likes Rebel more than he's letting on. Now we'll see. So when Danita gets back to Kingdom Records, she actually confronts Darlene on where the lies actually started. So in this conversation, we learned that Danita got pregnant prior to getting married to Calvin. We know that she was in a relationship with Caesar at the time, so he must have been the father of this particular child. So they drove her out of Atlanta somewhere, made her have the child in secret, and pressured her to put the child up for adoption. So then Darlene tells Danita that the baby actually died of SIDS a few months after she gave birth. So Danita looked at her with like so much pain and disgust and was like, you never said a word. And Darlene was trying to make excuses, telling her, oh, you were so young. You were getting ready to marry Calvin and you were still in love with him. I guess him was Caesar, I guess. And saying that it was so much in stake, probably worried about what the church people was going to say, I guess. Danita told her for 30 years she thought she had birthed a child that had grown up and thrived, but you kept that baby's death in the dark. Darlene got up in her face and said, sometimes that's where the truth belongs, and walked out. I said, mm-mm-mm, that Loretta Divine be acting, acting. So I have several questions when it comes to this newfound information. So is Darlene lying about the child being dead? I'm starting to feel like Darlene is very money hungry and they probably sold the child for the kingdom. Now, the child in question, I think, is the guy that came to the hospital and actually laid hands on Danita and prayed with Calvin. And one more thing. So after faith night, Caesar and Danita got into it and he mentioned something about her having an abortion. So did she lie to Caesar and say that she had an abortion or has it been several pregnancies? Inquiring minds want to know. So Calvin and Taj, they share a moment over a cup of coffee. And Calvin, he notices that Taj is stressed out. So he asks him about Essence and does he love her and all of this and that. And Taj turns it around and wants wanted to know more information about how Calvin and Danita met. So he went into detail about that and ended it with the unexpected blessing that came out of their marriage was having two beautiful, talented children. And he ends up taking his glasses off and Taj notices his black eye and asks him what happened. So he lies and tells him that he was street preaching and somebody didn't like the word and hit him. And then he goes to tell Taj that him and uh, CJ need to be careful and to let him know if anything pops off, anything strange happens, make sure they come and tell him. He really should have just told him what time it was and told him the truth. That way he can really be aware of his surroundings. And I don't know why they sitting in broad daylight in the open if he getting all these death threats. So we go over to Redeeming Records and Jewel and Rebel are giving each other encouraging words before they go to this uh, correctional facility. Then Taj and Caesar come out and he basically gives them a rundown on what's going to be happening. And he lets them know that Naomi Rain will be joining them. It's a family meeting going on. And of course, Darlene is running a tight ship and letting them know what's what. She told Calvin had he gone on his sabbatical instead of street preaching, he wouldn't have that black eye. So CJ, she done got all like nervous and scared, like, Dad, you got to be careful. So then he wants to say, all of you guys need to be careful, you know, trying to say it on the slide instead of just coming out once again and telling everybody what time it is. 
So then she forces Danita to apologize to CJ for interrupting her sermon in church on Sunday. She hands them some scripts and tell them they need to follow them to a T because she has set them up with an interview with a Sky Johnson. They all took their little scripts and left her sitting there. So Calvin and Danita, they end up having a conversation and he says how one Sunday he went to the podium to do a sermon and he had a little itty bitty piece of paper with a scripture that she had given him and when he read it he realized that was her letting him know that she was pregnant with their first child CJ and how that was one of his greatest memories and Danita was the one to give it to him. I sure hope both of these kids are his because this show looking a little shaky. So Danita tells him that she has to tell him something and she's tired of all the lies. So she tells him that CJ was not her first child and he says he already knows because Darlene told him right before the wedding and she was like she should have known. <laughs> so Danita told Calvin that she always thought that her child was out there but Darlene said that the child had died but Calvin just was sitting there like hmm hmm like he really didn't say anything but it was like he kind of knew something but wasn't going to say nothing like I thought it was kind of weird his reaction. So we go over to Lakeland Correctional and Caesar, he's addressing the inmates, thanking them for having him for another year, saying that he's one that knows about second chances. That's why he named his record label Redeeming Records. And then I was curious, has he been to prison or has some type of backstory? Because I don't remember him having a redeeming story. So Caesar, he introduced his entire crew. Everybody had a little quick solo piece. They did a couple selections. Taj actually sang. I guess he did get a little nervous because he did look into Rebel's eyes almost the whole time. Them two giving each other the eye. The inmate seems to be getting a blessing. They felt it in their spirit. Rebel seemed like she had a little change of heart, which was good. That's what they wanted. So we'll see how that turn out the next time we see her because you know how she do flip flop. So it turned out to be pretty good. And this is just a side note for Caesar. Now... It's been at least three or four weeks since he was supposed to take some money back to this little retirement home where these two ladies that he calls mom was at. Now, did they get kicked out or what happened with that? Like, why haven't we gone back to that storyline yet? Because I don't remember him pulling no money in. So Danita, she goes in to talk to CJ and she basically lets her know that she's truly sorry. She didn't mean to upstage her in church. She just really just wanted to support her. CJ was like, wow, you know, she was shocked. CJ tells her, thank you for saying that. And Danita says, you know, if you're ever hurting, you can come to me. And she says, thank you again. They share a tender moment and CJ tells her mom that she loves her. Danita says, I love you back. So in the final scene of the episode, Danita is talking to Ren, the attorney, and he lets her know that her insurance policy for her voice is worth 30 million dollars that her mother took out on her years ago and Danita actually signed off on it. Now I told y'all Darlene was money hungry so she asked him for some good news and he tells her that Caesar's attorney they're gonna hold off on a lawsuit until she gets better until her mind clears so she says oh so my amnesia is a blessing imagine that and the episode ends there. So I guess now Danita is really going to be laying it on thick. I already thought she was faking as it is. So she really getting ready to be faking it now. What did you guys think of this episode? Drop down in the comments so we can talk about it. As always, you guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.